How do I pick a chassis for center stage? The center stage field poses an interesting challenge for teams. While the floor is mostly flat, there are several obstacles in the way between you and the scoring zone. For example, the pixel, while small, oftentimes can get stuck if your robot does not have a sufficient amount of ground clearance. There are two main pathways to get across the field in center stage. Robots can elect to go under the stage door or pass under the truss. Both of these obstacles have a certain height challenge. Robots attempting to go under the truss should take note of the 14 inch height limiter. Robots planning on going through the stage door may need to consider the 12 inch gap between the door and the floor when designing their robot. Take special consideration on your robot's width. The gap between the legs of the truss structure is about 22 inches wide. Teams should take special note of the crossing lanes in first center stage. Game pieces entered in the wings are diagonally across the field from the scoring zone. Teams will have to take special note of opposing alliance members crossing paths with them on their way to the scoring zone. Given that the scoring zone is on the opposite side of the field as the loading station, teams may want to consider whether they want their robot to spin to change directions or have a pass-through mechanism for their game element. A pass-through mechanism can be as simple as an arm that passes over your robot. There are many different chassis you can select to play center stage. For example, here's a basic design we include in our starter kit. It features two Omnis in the front and two stealth wheels in the back. What this does is it allows you to get a fairly simple drivetrain that's able to move around the field quickly and efficiently. The Omni wheels in the front allow the robot to turn with very little issue. A benefit of a chassis like this is that it only uses two motors, which allows you to use your motors in other applications. It's very customizable in where you can put your wheels, as well as different things such as the gear pairs to make your motor spin faster, as well as the motors themselves. Overall, this is a very simple chassis. Another potential drivetrain teams could choose is something akin to this, a Kiwi drive. So Kiwi drives are highly maneuverable drivetrains that allow you to go in any direction you want. And additionally, they only use three motors to achieve this. This particular chassis uses a dually omni-wheel setup, which increases the number of rollers per wheel, makes for a much smoother drive. Programming for a chassis like this is more complicated than a tank drive robot, and so teams should take special note if they want more of a challenge. Another very high mobility drive chassis is the Mechanum drive. This is an example of our Robits Mechanum expansion kit. In our Mechanum kit, we feature our BB Mechanum wheel. These wheels we released last year, and they have ball bearings in the rollers for increased smoothness while driving. An astute observer might notice the kit offers multiple ways of configuring your Mechanum drive, whether that includes putting your motor over your wheel, placing your drive gearbox over your drive tube, or some combination of placing your drive gearbox in line with the wheel. One great ability of a Mechanum drive is its ability to move around the field and rotate at the same time. This can help eliminate the need for pass-through mechanisms on a robot. With the ability to move side to side, teams may find alignment on the backdrop to be quite a bit easier, as well as the ability to pick up a tricky game piece. Teams may also want to experiment by swapping out motor ratio, gear ratio, wheel size, or even wheel type. There are a lot of other drive chassis teams can choose to play center stage. Be sure to look over the official game manual before building your robot. And that's how you pick a chassis for center stage.